Hey everyone, happy Tuesday. Joe here at Sports Grid. It is time for a pocket with Joe. We have an absolutely loaded slate out there on the board. So I thought I'd get off to an early start here. I will be on game time decisions. So make sure you join me at 625 Eastern going over hockey in some more detail there as well. And if you haven't caught my MLB cup of Joe, go over and check it out after we're done here because I got a couple bets up on the diamonds. Let's jump into the first game. The Carolina Hurricanes and the Boston Bruins. Now, we keep talking about how impactful all of these games are. So let's just quickly, before we jump into that game, look at where the Boston Bruins are sitting. In the Eastern Conference, they're sitting first in the Eastern Conference with 107 points. They are five points above the Florida Panthers, who only have 102. When we look here... Sorry, they're sitting first in the Atlantic. When we look at the first in the Metro and first in the Eastern Conference, it is the New York Rangers with 110 points. So the Boston Bruins are three points behind the New York Rangers for the President's Trophy. Now, do they want, do either of these teams want to win the President's Trophy? Do the Dallas Stars want to win the President's Trophy who are sitting first in the Central? The Dallas Stars have 107 points as well. Um, as Boston. So they are in the same point position there. I don't know if I'd want to win the President's Trophy if I was any of these teams, but it does look like it's coming down to those three. So when we look at the rest of the schedule here, we could see anyone take it. Um, but I do think it will be the New York Rangers. So looking at the Boston Bruins taking on the Carolina Hurricanes tonight, the Carolina Hurricanes are sitting second in the Metro. They have 105 points, so they're five points behind the New York Rangers for taking that first place in the Metro. I do think we're going to see a great performance out of them tonight. Now, Krochichkov should be getting the start and Swayman here for the Boston Bruins. I was hoping we were going to see Anderson in goal, but I'm not seeing him. Anderson has been completely phenomenal out there for the Carolina Hurricanes since coming back from his time off due to that injury, uh, blood clot injury it was. So he's been fantastic. I do think in this one, you look at this game to stay under that total. This total of five and a half, you guys, I just think is too high. I also like the no goals in the first 10 minutes. That's coming in at plus 106. Five of the last six meetings between these two teams have gone under five and a half. I know it's a low scoring total, but you also look at what these teams have been doing as of late. The Carolina Hurricanes in their last 10 games are eight, one and one to that under the Boston Bruins are sitting six and four to the under in their last 10. Now, six goals the Canes have allowed in their past five games and they've recorded three shutouts as well. And the Boston Bruins, 14 goals allowed in their past seven games. So allowing an average of two goals per game. I do think this is a nice low scoring one where you can just hit that under five and a half and not worry about a winner. Jimmy, thank you for being here. It's good to see you pop up. Okay, the next game we have the Washington Capitals taking on the Detroit Red Wings. Probably one of the most meaningful games of the night. Can the Washington Capitals on the road finally stop losing these games? They've lost their last six games, gone 0-4-2. and It's looking disastrous. Now, Ovechkin is trying to get his team to the playoffs, and Charlie Lindgren has been phenomenal in goal for them. He's got a safe shot, on so goal prop of 26-and-a-half, and I do think you take it to the over tonight. The Detroit Red Wings are going to be firing on him like crazy, and for this one, to be a win here for the Washington Capitals, they need Charlie Lindgren at his best, and he knows that. We're going to see the defense give support, but they don't give enough support where I think they will limit the Red Wings' ability to take these shots. Now, Alex Leon on the other side here for the Detroit Red Wings, phenomenally strong as well. He's 2-1 and one with a 2.35, or sorry, 2.37 goals against average and a 9.38 save percentage in his three starts in April. So he's been on fire out there. He has a safe shots on goal prop of 26 and a half as well. My concern here is will the Caps get enough shots off? I do think this one has the opportunity of going to overtime. So I would take it over the 26 and a half before I took it to the under because of that factor. This is the third meeting between these two. And like I said, this is probably the most impactful game for where these teams land in a wild card spot or not. We have the Washington Capitals, like I said, losing their last six, fifth in the Metro, 83 points. 
They're sitting one point behind the Red Wings and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, when we look at the Red Wings here, are sitting fifth in the Atlantic, 84 points, five games remaining. It's going to be the tightest race ever, I think, for this last wildcard spot. Because when you look at the Eastern Conference, we have Boston locked up in the Atlantic, Florida locked up in the Atlantic, and Toronto locked up in the Atlantic Division. We have the New York Rangers in the number one right now for the Met. The Canes, number two in the Met. And then the Islanders. Now, the Islanders are down 20 points behind the Carolina Hurricanes. So that third position is the position that we're um, looking for changes within the third spot in the Metro. When we look at the Pittsburgh Penguins, they're sitting at 84 points and 78 games played. So they have played one more game than the New York Islanders who are sitting in that third spot in the Metro. The Penguins are fourth in the Metro. 85 points here for the Islanders, 77 games played. So when we look at that last wild card spot, because the Lightning have clinched the first wild card spot, it's coming down to the Red Wings or the Penguins or the Islanders, because we could see the Penguins go into the third in the Metro and the Islanders fall off into a play a wild card position, and then the Capitals, and then the Flyers, and then the Devils and the Sabres. Now, in my opinion, the Flyers, the Devils, and the Sabres are done. This is going to come down to the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Detroit Red Wings and the New York Islanders, and possibly the Washington Capitals. But if it's the Washington Capitals, they absolutely need this win tonight. Otherwise, I don't think they're going to be able to get there. I do like the Red Wings at home. I know you're going to have to lay juice on the Red Wings in this situation. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to look at the Capitals, and I'm going to look at their team total. I think whoever wins this, Wins it in a 2-1 style game. So I'm going to take the Capitals team total under 2.5. That's coming in at plus 100. Now the under 5.5, I do think it's a hard-hitting defensive game. The under 5.5 coming in at plus 112, I do think is a strong way to go. But I worry about that empty netter coming in and ruining that. Yes, I think it's a 2-1. Yes, I think this is probably a game that goes to overtime as well. So we could see the 2-2 going into OT. That puts us at five goals. It worries me that empty netter situation in a game that I think could go to OT with how tight this battle is going to be. This game to go to overtime is coming in at plus 340. So I definitely look at that. But I'm going to take the Capitals team total under two and a half. And this one to go to overtime. You've got Dylan Larkin on one side. You've got Ovechkin on the other. I'm not playing props. I don't know how it's going to play out. If it's 2-1 in OT, you know, 3-2 in OT, I really don't expect this one to be a 4-3 overtime game. Sharks money line parlay with the Royals. Okay. With the Royals and the Rangers. But about the coyotes. I don't hate it. We'll look at we'll look at all the games on the ice. So many sports on tonight. Yeah, it's gonna be a great game out there. Um, I'm not betting a lot on these meaningless games at the end of the night with the sharks and the coyotes. The sharks are playing Calgary, the coyotes are in action versus Seattle. Those games aren't meaningful. You can play some player props, I think, higher scoring. So when you're looking at one of those teams to win on the money line, I would stay off it. But we'll get to those games. Let's first look at the Ottawa Senators taking on the Florida Panthers. Now, current odds on this game here. Let's pull it up. The Florida Panthers minus 245 plus 198 for the Ottawa Senators. That total of six and a half. Juice to the under at minus 130 to the under and plus 106 to the over. Now, the last time these teams played, the Florida Panthers absolutely spanked the Ottawa Senators, winning at six to nothing. They've actually really dominated this matchup versus each other um, winning eight of the last 10 meetings. Corpus Allo expected here for the Ottawa Senators and Bovarovsky expected for the Florida Panthers. Now the Florida Panthers have lost their last two. They got that loss to Boston. Um, it was a three to two loss in OT. So they're sitting second in the Atlantic with 102 points, four games left, but all of these games at home. And when we look at the Ottawa Senators here, this team looking to play upset. This is their seventh straight season that they've been eliminated and not made the playoffs. So that frustration for Ottawa fans and this team. But when we look at who's been playing in better form as of late, it's the Ottawa Senators. It's like that weight came off their shoulders of trying to get to the playoffs. And now they're actually playing good hockey. If only they started this way. They're six and three. Um, 
in their last nine games. So they've been playing strong. We look at the Florida Panthers. They've gone two, seven and two in their past 12. It's not what we wanted to see out of them. I'm going to look at a couple of different players that I'm going to circle here. Now we know there's a feud between the Matthew or the Kachuk brothers, Matthew Kachuk and Brady Kachuk. Brady Kachuk actually has more goals than Matthew Kachuk, but Matthew Kachuk has more points. So he's been able to get more assists up on the board. I'm not going to circle either of them in this one. I'm going to look at Barkov here for the Florida Panthers for that anytime goal. His anytime goal coming in at plus 170. He's on a seven-game um, scoring streak. He's got five goals and five assists in the last seven games overall. So I love his ability to come out nice and strong. Now, Jacob Chikrin is a player I don't mention much. He plays for the Ottawa Senators. He's a defenseman. I'm going to take him for his point tonight. He's coming in for the point at plus 120. And why am I going to take him here? This is actually a funny reason why to take Jacob, Jacob Chikrin in this one. His dad played in the NHL for, what, eight seasons? Jeff Chikrin. Now, he is now a broadcaster for the Florida Panthers. So his dad's going to be there um, doing some play-by-play -play broadcasting for the Florida Panthers. I do think Jacob Chikrin will score in front of his dad um, in his dad's place of work here. So I do think it's a nice one to look at. His point coming in at plus 120. You don't even have to look at him for the anytime goal, but I do think the anytime goal at plus 490 is a solid way. I could see that coming into play tonight. These teams get scrappy out there, and you've got to look at the Ottawa Senators finding a way to score in this one. The power play point for him is coming in at plus 380 as well, and you think that the Ottawa Senators are going to score and how uh, scrappy these teams get out there, you could see Jacob Chikrin score on the power play. So I do like his ability to come out. The point is the safer way to go up plus 120, but I think he finds a way in front of his dad. Okay, let's look at the next game out there on the ice. We have the Philadelphia Flyers taking on the Montreal Canadiens. Now, the Flyers were a team that we all expected to make the playoffs here. They're not officially eliminated, but they slipped out of playoff contention in my mind. 78 games played, 83 points on the season. So they've played an extra game over the Washington Capitals, and they're both at 83 points. They've also played the same amount of games as the Pittsburgh Penguins, who are one point above them, and one game more than the Detroit Red Wings, who are one point above them. So I don't see the Flyers being able to make the playoffs here, getting that last wild card spot. They've lost their last seven games, sitting there with 83.6 in the Metro. When we look at the Montreal Canadiens here, we know this team has been eliminated, but these young playmakers are sure making the best of things out there on the ice. Sam Montreview getting the start here today in net for Montreal and Urshan getting the start for the Philadelphia Flyers. And I really do think this came down to the Flyers really running out of steam going into these last couple of weeks. They're playing in physical, hard-hitting games, and they just don't have enough in them. Now, Owen Tibbet has continued to be able to get on the scoreboard, get those points behind him. So if you're looking at him for the anytime goal for the Flyers tonight, he's coming in at plus 185. I do like looking at the players for Montreal here because I do think this is going to be a higher scoring game. I'm taking the over five and a half at minus 138. I'm also going to look at Cole Caulfield for the anytime goal here for the Montreal Canadiens. Now, he has been held off the scoreboard versus the Flyers this season, but this is his 200th game in the NHL tonight, and I do think it's an impactful one for him. The anytime goal coming in at plus 165. And he's also, he's got a goal in the last four games. So he's been rolling nice and hot. Game 200, you got to think we find that anytime goal at plus 165. It looks like a solid way to go. Now, Nick Suzuki, we can't forget about him. He's been phenomenally strong out there. Plus 165 for Nick Suzuki to score a goal as well. Two of the last three meetings in Montreal have gone over that total. And I expect this to be one that he goes over it today. The Islanders and the Rangers, you're taking over five and a half. 
That's going to be a great game. We'll get to that one in just a second. First, we're going to talk about Toronto taking on the New Jersey Devils. Now, Joseph Wall expected to get the start here for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Second night of a back-to-back. -back. They're off the overtime win last night versus the Pittsburgh Penguins. I tell you, I had the Penguins in that one. I really expected more out of that team. I expected them to get the win, but Toronto came and did what they do at home. They played phenomenally strong. Now, the New Jersey Devils are starting Jake Allen in net. The last time he faced the Toronto Maple Leafs, they were able to record the win the Devils were. He saved 42 shots on his net. Jake Allen's been fantastic in some of these games and other games. He's gone back to the Jake Allen that we all knew in Montreal versus the Toronto Maple Leafs tonight and Austin Matthews looking to break that um, record for goals He's coming up on that 70 mark, you guys. He hit 65, tying Alex Ovechkin's 2007-2008 record uh, for the most goals of an active player on the ice. So he's at 65. His anytime goal tonight coming in at minus 110. There is value in Austin Matthews to come out nice and strong. As long as Jake Allen doesn't shut things down here, which you guys, I don't have that much faith in Jake Allen. I expect this to be a 4-3 style game. Going over that total, I don't expect it to be a low-scoring one. So give me the over 6.5 at minus 110. Give me Austin Matthews for another goal here uh, at minus 110 for his anytime goal. You could combine those two together in like a slight parlay. Toronto sitting um, third in the Atlantic. So Toronto's points right now, I believe it's 99. Yeah, 99 points on the season. They played 77 games, so they have five games left. For them. Now, the Devils did beat the Maple Leafs back on March 26. It's not that long ago. That was when Jake Allen saved 42 shots on his net. It was six to three. I can't see him going that phenomenally strong in this game, but I do think the 27 and a half is light. I expected that number to be closer to 30 and a half or 20, you know, 29 and a half, 30 and a half safe shots on goal for Jake Allen. And then I would have been looking at the under, but at 27 and a half, I'd look to the over. The books have a juice, so at minus 125. Okay. Th these teams play again on Thursday in Toronto, too. So if you're looking for Austin Matthews to hit that 70 plus goal mark, you need five more goals out of him. He's got two games versus the Devils. So you need a goal. I think you need two goals out of him tonight, two goals out of him in the next one. I don't know, you guys. The 70 mark is going to be hard. When we look at Austin Matthews and who they have left, Toronto has left. So two more games versus Devils. We can count on one goal in each. And then it's the Red Wings, Panthers, and the Lightning. The Panthers are playing so much for so much. The Red Wings are playing for so much. The Lightning and Toronto, they play hard hitting games, normally high scoring, though. We need the majority of these goals to come versus the Devils because one versus the Lightning, I don't know if he scores versus the Florida Panthers or the Detroit Red Wings because Detroit's going to be in a situation where it is a must win defensive battle out there. So I would look for him. Maybe we look at Austin Matthews for two goals tonight. Okay, let's move on to the next game, you guys. You're talking about it already. The New York Rangers and the New York Islanders in action at 7 p.m. Eastern. Now, Igor Sisterkin expected to get the start here for the Rangers and Valama for the New York Islanders. He was solid in his last game out. I really like what we've seen out of him. Current odds on this one, if I can find them. Give me one second, you guys. There's so many games in action tonight. We have a total of five and a half juice to the over at minus 120 to the over five and a half. We also have that money line sitting with the New York Rangers at minus 137. The New York Islanders at plus 114. If you think the Rangers can win this big laying one and a half at plus 190. Like I said, this team is sitting in first in the Metro and they're also looking to get that president's trophy. They have 110 points on the season. So they're three points ahead of the Boston Bruins for that top spot in the Eastern Conference and the president trophy and three points ahead of the Dallas Stars for the president's trophy. So they can't take the loss here versus the Islanders. The problem here, the Islanders have been locking down in playoff style hockey already. And we know they're not there yet. They have been able to move into that third spot in the Metro with 85 points. 
They're one point and one game in hand over the Pittsburgh Penguins for that third spot in the mat. So for them, this is do or die hockey out there as well. I expect a low scoring battle and a low scoring battle right out of the gate. I'm going to take the under one and a half in the first period. That's coming in at minus 112. I'm taking the no goals in the first 10 minutes. That's coming in at plus 110. It's the best value I can get in this game other than this game to go to overtime at plus 340. I don't want to take a side in this one. I think this is such a low scoring tight battle. I would be shocked if we see those goals pouring in to start this game. I would think between this biggest rivalry out there on the ice, we see these teams completely locked down with those goals coming late. One goal in the second, one goal in the third to tie this up and to push it to OT. So I think it's going to be a crazy night out there on the ice in this one. So give me this one going um, to overtime at plus 340. You're going to ride with the Red Wings and the Kings on the money line. I like that. I think the Kings come out and dominate. They're playing the Ducks tonight, so we will get into that one. The Habs probs tonight. Yeah, the Habs should come out nice and strong. I love looking at those players for um, great games, like 200th game. What is that word? You guys know what I mean. Impactful games? It's not impactful. Okay. Let's look at the Columbus Blue Jackets taking on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, current odds on this one, we have a total six and a half at minus 122 to the over, plus 100 to the under. The Tampa Bay Lightning are almost a $4 favorite at minus 360, plus 280 here on the Columbus Blue Jackets. Now, we talked about the fact that Tampa has clinched that first wild card spot in the Eastern Conference. They have 93 points, they played 77 games. They're solidified in that spot, in a wild card spot. They're not losing their wild card spot. Now, looking at them between the second or the first and the second spot in um, that wild card. Sorry, the dog is starting to cry in the corner. And I don't know why. I think my daughter is out there. 93 points here versus 84 for the Detroit Red Wings. So they're sitting really comfortable in that spot. Taking on the Columbus Blue Jackets tonight, could this be a look-ahead situation for their next set of games? Not really, because it's the Senators on deck on Thursday, the Capitals on the road on Saturday, the Sabres at home on Monday, and the Leafs at home on Wednesday. So if it was the Leafs coming up right away and not the Leafs coming up for their last game of the season, I would, I would not look at the upset coming in here for the Columbus Blue Jackets. But I do think Columbus here, this is the second game on the road. They're looking to play upset. These teams have split on the season, both winning one of the matchups four to two. Eighth in the Metro here for the Columbus Blue Jackets. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the lack of defense out of the Tampa Bay Lightning because I think we're going to see this game just be an offensive battle out there. And I know we've got great goaltending. Andre Vasilevsky expected to get the start for Tampa, but Jack Greaves, well, he's got solid numbers. I can't trust him out there on the ice. I'm going to look at the first period over one and a half. Well, I wanted to, but it's too juiced at minus 158. I'm just going to look at both teams to score in the first period. It's a plus 156. I think the Columbus Blue Jackets come out and get a nice goal to start this one. Just one second, you guys. Sorry about that. The dog was crying and distracting my brain as my daughter left the house, I think. So let's look at the next game here. The Buffalo Sabres are taking on the Dallas Stars. Oh, and before I forget, we got to look at Nikita Kucherov here at the Tampa Bay Lightning. Two plus points tonight coming in at minus 120. The anytime goal at minus 110 and two plus goals at plus 600. Nikita Kucherov has 136 points on the season you know he wants to keep this lead Nathan McKinnon's only three points behind him these guys are so competitive out there so I do think we see Tampa get the puck to Nikita Kucherov for him to keep racking up his points tonight he will be out there playing on the ice if it comes down to those final minutes and Tampa's up great in this one so I do think it's a fantastic thing to look at I think the Red Wings get it done, Dave. I think it's going to be a happy night for you. That is for sure. Hopefully you don't have to shave those eyebrows. Ooh. Okay, the Buffalo Sabres. If you guys don't follow pics from Dave, go give him a follow. He's a great follow for sure. 
The Buffalo Sabres taking on the Dallas Stars. The Dallas Stars are a huge favorite here. The Dallas Stars coming in at, as soon as I find it, minus 230, plus 188 for the Buffalo Sabres, total of six and a half. Now, six and a half is juice to the over, or sorry, juice to the under at minus 122, plus 100 to the over. Plus one and a half for the Buffalo Sabres is minus 130. The Dallas Stars minus one and a half is plus 108. I'm looking at this one as a possible upset here for the Buffalo Sabres. Not that I don't think the Dallas Stars have a ton to play for, but I don't love the scheduling spot here for the Dallas Stars. And I think there's so much value on the Buffalo Sabres, plus one and a half on that puck line at minus 130. Tag Thompson has been playing absolutely phenomenal for the Sabres. His anytime goal coming in at plus 195 is something I'm going to uh, bet here. But we look at the Dallas Stars. They're coming off that road game in Colorado, taking on the Avs. They got the huge win over the Avs, seven to four. They've come home to play this game, and then they have the Winnipeg Jets on a deck on Thursday. So they have a five-point edge over the Colorado Avalanche and a seven-point over the Winnipeg Jets, but still central divisional opponents on either side of this matchup here versus a team that's sitting sixth in the Atlantic with 79 points. Lankakin has been strong for the Buffalo Sabres, so I do think this could be a really tight game. So give me the Buffalo Sabres plus one and a half at minus 130 and tag Thompson for the anytime goal. Now I'm going to stay off looking for the upright upset. I could see it happening though, but Dallas is so phenomenally strong that I don't want to go against them. When we look at who you can look at or count on here for the Dallas Stars to be able to get points or anytime goals is Ben here. He's come in with 12 goals and 13 assists in the last 17 games. And you got to look at the Dallas Stars and what they've been able to do since the end of February. They've gone on a 14 and three run. So they've been phenomenal out there. I just think this could be the making of an upset game here. I don't like when a team is playing a weaker team when they're sandwiched between two divisional opponents. It's just not a play for me on that team, especially when you have to lay so much. And you look at them, their home record on the puck line, they're 14 and 23 at home on the puck line. They win games at home. They don't cover. When you look at the Buffalo Sabres on that puck line on the road, 23 and 15. So strong reasons why to look here at the puck line for the Buffalo Sabres. Kelly, thank you for being here. I appreciate everything um, you do as well. I appreciate all of your kind comments. Okay, the Winnipeg Jets and the Nashville Predators. Another game so impactful out here. Connor Hellebuck expected to get the start here for the Winnipeg Jets. Saros for the Nashville Predators. Now, Saros versus the Winnipeg Jets has been strong in his career, going 6-6-3 six, six, and three with a 2.47 goals against average and a 9-2-7 save percentage. He's also been able to record one shutout win in those 15 games versus the Jets. Now, the Winnipeg Jets are rolling hot. They're third in the Central with 100 points. They've clinched their playoff spot with the Nashville Predators sitting fourth in the Central. They're the first wild card spot with 94 points in the Western Conference, but have played one more game than Vegas, who has 92 points. So Vegas is only two points behind them with one game in hand. Not a nice situation here for the Nashville Predators. I do think at home here, this is a must-win spot for the Nashville Predators, and I think they get it done. When you also look at the Winnipeg Jets, you got to look at who they have on deck as well. The Dallas Stars are in that look-ahead with Winnipeg, yeah, with Winnipeg on deck. When we look at Winnipeg, they have the Dallas Stars on deck and then the Colorado Avalanche on deck on Saturday. Every single game matters. I absolutely know that, but I do think here this game for the Preds is a game that is a must win for them, and I think they're able to pull it off. But you look at Winnipeg, those two games on deck, this schedule is so hard for this team. Now they've got 100 points. They have clinched. So if they lose this, it's not going to impact them, but it, it will impact where they finish within the division. So the Predators at minus 105. I think they win it tonight. And if they do win it tonight, or if the St. Louis Blues lose. So they can lose tonight and the St. Louis Blues lose. And then they do clinch a playoff spot, a wild card playoff spot. But I do think they clinch it with the win tonight. There's so many different factors that go into these games. I 
tell you, going over these games today is so much to consider. The Minnesota Wild and the Colorado Avalanche, 9.30 Eastern start on this one. The Minnesota Wild at plus 160. Another team that people had high hopes in making the playoffs. Minus 194 here for the Colorado Avalanche. While the Wild haven't been eliminated, I just don't see them making it. This total is 6.5 at minus 114 to the over, minus 106 to the under. When we look at where the Minnesota Wild are sitting, they are sitting in the Western Conference to, or they've got 83 points in the Western Conference. Vegas right now holds that last wild card spot in the Western Conference with 92 points. They're 83 points. This team is so far behind. I cannot see a way with them being down nine points that they won't get eliminated from playoff contention. It's just they're too far back. Um, They've got five games left, though, so Vegas would have to lose everything. They would have to win everything and jump over the St. Louis Blues. Hope the St. Louis Blues lose everything. So it's asking a lot, but I don't think these players, they know it, but I don't think they're going to go out on a low note. I do think they try to get the upset win over Colorado tonight. I'm looking for this one to be a higher scoring one. It goes against what you should think. When you look at Georgiev here getting the start for the Columbus or for the Colorado Avalanche, because of how we've seen him this season in the two starts versus the Minnesota Wild, he's been phenomenally strong 1.47 goals against average and a 941 save percentage. But I think the Wild in this game are able to hit him. So, you know, goalies have bad days, and I could see this being a bad day. The Minnesota Wild are going to bring everything they've got. Gustafson getting the start here now. His starts versus Colorado. He's got an over a three goals against average versus them. He's gone 0 2 and 1, so yet to record a win. Colorado sitting that second in the central with 102 points, five points behind Dallas. They want this win. I just think it's tighter than this number, and I think it goes over the total. We also have the Wild coming off a big win over Chicago, so they'll come in with that confidence. Yes, it was Chicago, but they got the 4 to nothing win. Both teams have also been clicking on that power play. So whichever team stays out of the box really will have the advantage. I'm going to look here at the over. I'm going to look at the Minnesota Wild over two and a half goals. That's coming in at minus 136. I think this is a 4-3 game with Colorado getting the win. Nathan McKinnon for the two plus points in this one coming in at minus 118. Again, he is battling it out with Nikita Kucherov of the Tampa Bay Lightning and Connor McDavid of the Edmonton Oilers for the most points on the season. He's got three goals and seven assists in the past five games, 133 points on the season. Again, three points behind Nikita Kucherov. When we look here at the Minnesota Wild, if they're able to keep this tight, it is because of Kaprizov. Kaprizov's been phenomenal out there. His two plus points, the value is there at plus 172. If you just want to look at him for the power play point tonight, you can look at that as well. I believe the power play point's coming in at plus 120. The over six and a half again, my favorite play. It's also a bad scheduling spot here for the abs. They're off the loss to the Dallas Stars and they have the Jets on deck on Saturday and then Vegas and then the Oilers. They have hard games to finish out the season. Jets, Vegas, Oilers are their last three. So after this one, the games only get harder. They're going to want a nice big win here, but I don't know if they can get a big win. Kale McCarr for the power play point for the Avs is coming in at plus 130. Miko Rantanen, we know how phenomenally strong he has been. He's second on the Avs for points with 102 points, 40 goals, and 62 assists in 77 games. So he's been absolute fire. I can see the Rangers getting the win. I love that one to go to overtime, though. I think the overtime is in play. Okay. The LA Kings and the Anaheim Ducks. Cam Talbert expected to get the start for the LA Kings. It's actually gone pretty fast today to show you guys. I was worried with how many games we had. Minus 300 for the LA Kings, plus 240 for the Anaheim Ducks. Total of five and a half. Minus 114 to the over, minus 106 to the under. I think the LA Kings go over this total themselves. Five and a half on John Gibson. Give me the Kings to run up this scoreboard. The Kings, I'm waiting for that big offensive game out of them, and I do think this is it. I'm just going to look up their team total. 
Um, their team total coming in at, if my uh, computer will want to work here. Okay, the book doesn't want to give me the team total on this one. We'll see what it's coming in at in just one second. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to look at the LA Kings to just be able to win that first period on the puck line, laying half a goal at plus 112. Actually, it's DOS still expected in net here for the Anaheim Ducks. When we look at the LA Kings, they're sitting third in the Pacific with 93 points. Vegas is sitting one point behind them for that third spot. The LA Kings want that third spot. They don't want to drop down to the wild card position. So I do think this is one where we can see the Kings come out. They come out nice and strong. I don't trust Dostal in goal for them, Sean. I think Dostal struggles here versus the LA Kings. And I could see if it is Cam Talbot in net, him being able to get the shutout win here. Cam Talbot has been phenomenally strong. And with these teams rolling into the playoffs, we need the LA Kings to come out phenomenally strong. Now they haven't officially um, clinched a playoff spot. Again, they're sitting third in the Pacific with 93 points or six points behind the Edmonton Oilers, two points or sorry, one point above the Vegas Golden Knights for that third in the Pacific. If they fall down and Vegas takes that third spot in the Pacific, right now the Preds would take that first spot, especially at the clinch tonight. And then we'd see the LA Kings one point behind the Preds as it would stand right now if the Kings drop down. So it's tight, you guys. The LA Kings need this win. Let's just look at their team total here. Now, if it will open up. The team total for the LA Kings is three and a half at minus 118 to the over. I do think that is a strong way to go. I can't see this one going to overtime. I really do think the Kings come out right away and put up those goals. So I would even look at the over one and a half in the first period. The LA Kings to record the first shot on goal in the first period is minus 128. That's interesting, the first shot on goal. I don't trust those shot on goal props. I can't play them anymore because the books seem to take away a shot that looks like a shot. Then they're not calling it a shot, so I can't do it. The goal in the first five minutes for the LA Kings to come out right away and dominate is plus 186. The over one and a half in the first period is minus 108. So I would just look at the Kings puck line first period, the Kings team total over three and a half. When we look at the last two games out there on the board, we have the Arizona Coyotes and the Seattle Kraken and the Calgary Flames taking on the San Jose Sharks. Now, I do think Calgary runs away with that game in San Jose against Mackenzie Blackwood. Jacob Markstrom expected to get the start. When we look at odds in this game, though, I'm just not in love with betting games that are meaningless here. The last time I watched the Sharks roll into Calgary at the end of last season, the Sharks dominated. I think we probably see Calgary pay back that last game of last season for the Calgary Flames. They're minus 220, though. I do think it's an offensive game, so I would take the over 5.5. The books have it juice, so at minus 142. I would look at Nazem Kadri for the anytime goal and Kuzmenko for the anytime goal. I would look for them to be able to convert on the power plays. So if you want to take the power play points for both of those players, I like it as well. And then looking at the Arizona Coyotes and the Seattle crack, and we have the Coyotes at plus 202 or sorry that's tomorrow that's versus uh vegas or vancouver canucks so i was like why is that line that way all of a sudden plus 125 here for the arizona coyotes and minus 150 for the kraken total five and a half at minus 134 to the over i would look at this one to go to the over it does look like grubauer versus vimelka in net the value on the Arizona Coyotes to pull off the upset against a Seattle Kraken team that I don't have faith in. I don't know about you guys. I have no faith in the Kraken with Clayton Keller to get the goal is where I'd be going. But again, these last two games mean nothing. So I wouldn't bet them. Logan Cooley, though, for the anytime goal, plus 350. Clayton Keller, plus 190. If you're looking at the Kraken, you know they want to finish off strong in front of home fans. So Jordan Everly here at plus 190. And then, um, yeah, I would just look at Eberle. He's the one that I trust the most. I want to look at anything else, you guys. Look at some player props in those games. But I appreciate each and every one of you for being here. you got to take Cam Talbert. Look at him for the shout-out at plus 800. That is a low number. 
There's a reason why that's a low number tonight. So I appreciate each and every one of you for being here. Drop what you're liking in the chat below this video. If you could like and retweet, share the video. I would so appreciate it. So more people know to tune in to Pocket with Joe for uh, Sports Grid every day. So you guys, all the best in all of your bets. Make sure you join me on Game Time Decisions, 625 Eastern. If you haven't caught my action on the diamonds, my MLB Cup of Joe is up right now. So go on over and check it out. I got two plays out there and over and an under. Gonna fade some pitchers um, today in those those under or over games and play on some pitchers in those overs. So you guys appreciate each and every one of you. We will see you back here tomorrow. Bye guys.